So supply that we had drawn got contacted. I told members we should expect a sell-off any minute here. They reached maximum size with their positions. There was nothing else for them to do except for the sell-off, which they've done, which fueled this big move to the downside. Now the question is what's gonna happen? How's it going fellow traders? Magic Trader here and this is your latest CFTC data analysis for the data that was reported on August 13, 2024. It just came out this past Friday. And so as we always do, let's start by diving into the snapshot of the positions held as of that date. And like I always like to do, I'd like to look at the change column to see what are the big players there. And we can obviously see S&P 500 very bearish, minus 128,000. Uh, bonds very, very bullish at positive 69,000. And we have pound US dollar bearish at 49,000, negative 49,000. And then just below US dollar Japanese yen, negative 70,000. So why did these moves take place well let's take a look and see what's going on here first let's start by taking a look at gold gold as you can remember we recently hit a maximum size or close to maximum size i should say with long positions reaching about 349,000. okay that was super aggressive what happened after that they took profits on those positions and then what are they doing right now they're adding them back now we're at 328. Listen, all time max is 408. So do they have room to add? Yes, they can continue adding. That's for sure. Are they focused on shorts? Not at all, not in the least. Okay, so here we are with price. Let's take a look at the weekly chart. We see that price was coasting sideways for quite some time. And now we're starting to break out of that area. We closed above all of this ranging, which is a really good sign. But what I'm cautious about is when we look at these positions last time they took profits on their longs was after reaching about 350 are they going to do that again and if so we're not that far away from there okay could they surpass 350 and go to 360 70 80 90 and up and 400 sure they could do that but we don't know if they're going to do that okay and we can't just assume they're going to do that because once you start assuming, you start losing, okay? You start losing money. And we're looking at the structures here on the monthly chart. We're looking at the structures here on the weekly chart. And they're not typically what we see when there's nice controlled momentum to the upside. So I'm cautious with this, okay? Ideally, what I would love to see is better formed structures to the upside. Because yes, do I think over the longer term, gold's gonna go higher? Yes, absolutely I do. But the structures that they're creating is not ideal. And if it's not ideal, I can't risk my money on it, all right? So I'm gonna be very cautious with this. Um, because like I said, we could see some momentum to the upside short term, maybe even medium term. How far, how long it's gonna last, no idea. So I'm gonna wait for something a little bit better than what we've got. All right, oil, um, longs pretty much cooled off, shorts super cooled off, nothing really here. Uh, they've been bullish a little bit for the last few, uh, let's see, since May, okay, we went into neutral territory for a little bit here, and it's been bullish ever since. We have demand in play, it already played out, momentum died, it stopped, and it has not yet picked up. So um, nothing really for me to trade here on oil. I don't like the chart. The data is not very clear. The structures aren't very clear. So I just move along. US dollar. All right. So look at this. If we look at longs and we look at shorts, we can see longs are larger than shorts. But the important thing is if you take a look at their coloring, the coloring of the cells, you can see all across the board pretty much it's all blue. What does blue mean? Blue means neutral. Blue means neutral, okay? Yes, if you look at shorts, look back here at July 16, 23rd, and 30th. It was more neutral. Now we're starting to creep out of that. Now, do I think that there's a chance that price is going to go even lower? Yeah, I do think so. Do you know why? It's not because the data is telling me so, okay? Yes, there's evidence that they're building up a short, but it's not screaming at me that it's going to drop. 
What's telling me that the dollar is likely going to drop is the U.S. CAD and the U.S. dollar Japanese yen. Okay, we'll look at those two a little bit later, but that those two charts are what is telling me that the bias should probably be bearish. Okay, if we look at the coloration of the sales here in net positions, they're bullish. So if it's going to drop, they've got to reduce this bullishness and start to become more bearish. So we'll see if they indeed want to do that. All right, uh, Aussie, take a look. Remember, uh, longs reached 106,000 aggressive. They took profits on those longs and look what it did. It fueled a move to the downside. All right. At the same time, they were adding shorts. Look at shorts from 95,000 to 107,000. So it's pretty aggressive. But take a look at the coloration of the cells. Okay, look, we used to be somewhat bearish down here. Okay, but do you see the color of the cells ever since then? Look what it's done. It's turned more neutral right here. In throughout here, it's neutral, right? Look at that positions when it turned neutral, when it's a tinge into bullish territory. Is this good to trade? No, it's not. I don't want to trade when the institutions are um, neutral, a position. I want to see some kind of direction with their positions. I want to see them building bullish. I want to see structures building bullish. Now, listen, we've been talking about how we have an institutional demand zone in play for quite some time. But look, if you went long here, here, it wouldn't have worked out for you so well. At least if you're a swing trader. Short-term momentum, sure, okay? But where was that momentum going to die down? And when was price going to just turn around? Very difficult to time. OK, I'm watching this one. I think it's good for a long position soon, but I want it to be very clear with the sentiment and with the positions of the institutions. OK, U.S. CAD. Remember, I was telling you about this. Look, U.S. CAD. Look at their positions. 219. That was maximum size. I told members they're going to profit take. Price is going to drop. And I shared with them a trade. The trade worked. I closed my position. Yes, I had a target a little bit lower. I could have held it a little bit longer and it was probably going to hit this week. But there were a few things I was looking at short term that uh, were giving an indication that price could have rallied. So I said, you know what? I'm out. I took my profits and I'm happy with it. Shorts cooled off. Longs, they're in profit taking mode. OK, so what do we what do we also have? We have supply being contacted here on the charts. Up here, supply is being contacted, contacted profit taking on long positions. That's pushing price to the downside. What we really need to come into play is selling. And if selling starts to come into play, then we can expect a bigger drop in price. OK, so I'm watching for that and waiting to see whether or not we're going to get that. All right, U.S. Swiss, look, they took profits on longs as well. Same thing with the U.S. CAD, right? And that's what these bubbles are showing here. Remember how I was telling you the dark bubbles mean they're accumulating. And then when you don't see the dark bubbles, that means they are profit taking from those longs, which is what is happening here. So profit taking on long positions, we're back at higher time frame demand. What's going to happen? Hard to say. We look at positions, we can see shorts. They're not even focused on them right now, right? And we look at the coloration of the cells. Look, they used to be somewhat bullish here. Right. Well, not somewhat, but aggressive, aggressively bullish. Look what's happening now. It's becoming less so. So when they're in the process of becoming less so, do you want to be bullish? Not really. Do you want to be bearish? Uh, not really either, because look at the short positions. They went from cooled off 7000 to 9000. The coloration of those cells are still blue. They're still somewhat neutral. So that's not enough for me to pile into a position with the U.S. Swiss. OK, so that's something for you to pay attention to moving forward. Euro U.S. dollar, been pointing this out. If we look at the column here. You can see that they've been neutral for a very long time. Now, listen, I'm a swing trader. I like to hold positions for more than 10 minutes, more than a day. Usually I like to hold them for a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, as long as it takes to get to the target based on the supply and demand currently in play. So. We look here and we see neutral. I don't like that very much for a swing trade. Look at net positions. They used to be bullish. They offloaded them. We talked about that a while back. Then they went a little bit in bearishness and then bullish and then bearish and then bullish. You see, it's a up and down zigzag nonsense. I don't want to trade stuff like this. Look, okay. 
Look at the ranging. Look at their, look how long it's been ranging for. This is crazy. I'm waiting for something bigger to happen here. Yes, have we had some short-term trades here and there? Yes, but nothing like I'd like. I was expecting price to drop at some point. It didn't want to do that. It's holding this range. So I'm not looking for shorts anymore. Okay. And now we're starting to see evidence to suggest that price might be going higher. But look here. If we look at the data, do you see signs of that? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. There is evidence suggesting that, but it has to do with other correlated markets. Right now, there's no evidence to suggest price is going to go higher. So we continue to sit on the sidelines and wait. There's many more opportunities in other places. Pound took profits on major long positions that they had, 188,000. Remember, that was all time maximum. They took profits and fueled the move to the downside, which is exactly what we suspected. And then it stopped. Boom. Momentum to the downside is dying. Now it's rallying back up to that area of supply. Listen, this is looking pretty good for a move higher. It could continue the momentum. They'd have to start building up longs again. Look, look at shorts. They don't even care about shorts. It's not even moving. Uh, coloration of the cells here are bullish. They become a little bit less so because of the profit taking. But we can see what just took place. This big move to the upside, it looks like they're accumulating long positions again and making them aggressive. So we're watching to see how it's going to react to this area of supply because it's heading right back into supply. We'd like to see them continue to add to their longs. We'd like to see some structures being built as price heads up into the supply and hopefully it will break through. All right, US dollar Japanese yen. Boy, did we ever get a drop on the US dollar Japanese yen. And where did it drop from? That's right, our supply area that we had drawn on the charts. So supply that we had drawn got contacted. I told members we should expect a sell-off any minute here. They reached maximum size with their positions. There's nothing else for them to do except for the sell-off, which they've done, which fueled this big move to the downside. Now the question is, what's going to happen next? Well, look at short positions. They're adding up short positions. It's getting pretty aggressive. Is this going to continue lower? There's a good chance of that. So I'd be watching for that as things unfold. Uh, Kiwi, they had massive longs. They took profits on those longs. A few of them moved to the downside. And now recently we've been seeing a rally to the upside. What's going to happen here? This chart's ugly. I don't like it. There's no major demand forces in play. Uh, right now, the, the bearishness is kicking in, but we just finished dropping. Okay. And then these last two weeks, we're seeing a rally. So look at the coloration of the cells here. All right. Does this look something like it's sustainable? Look at that. Red, green, blue, red, blue, green, blue, red. Okay, this is not good. Not sustainable. I don't like this chart. There's no setups for, for me to take. Uh, nothing ideal. So I would rather not even trade it. All right. So that is it, ladies and gents. Hope you enjoyed this session. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave some comments below. I love reading your comments. I really appreciate the comments that you leave me. If you have any suggestions on future episodes that you'd like to see when we do our live show during the week, let me know in the comments. Hit the like button, all that good stuff. I'll see you on the inside. You take care of yourself. www.whiteoakfx.com Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Bye-bye.